The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to see some of you here in church and also in the parish hall after a very long time coming to Mass again, not knowing the last time you came to Mass would have, was going to be your last time for a very long time. But we continue to pray and hope that things will get back to normal. At the look of things now, it doesn't look very good, but we believe that God can fix everything up. So we need your prayers and let us continue to pray that things will get back to normal so that everyone will return to their normal way of life. Today I want us to reflect on the invitation of Christ when he said, come to me, come to me, come to me. I don't so much remember some of my childhood experiences, but there was one particular one I will never forget. I was probably around six or seven years old then, and my mom was going to go to the farm. We lived in the village, and there were, my parents were farmers, peasant farmers, not commercial farmers. So on this particular day, I wanted to go to the farm with her, but because it's a very long walk, she thought I wouldn't be able to do it, so she decided to tell me to stay at home. But I didn't want to stay at home, so she had to bribe me. She gave me uh, a coin, which may be equivalent of 50 cents. So I was very happy, and I had this coin with me because I knew I was going to buy maybe some lollies with it. So as a child, I was so stupid. I was playing with this coin, putting it in different things, and then somehow it fell into a bottle. And when it fell into the bottle, I put my hands through the bottle. Luckily, my hand was able to go through it. But when I grabbed the coin, my hand couldn't come out. And I could, I didn't realize, I could just turn the bottle upside down and the coin would just drop. So I tried to pull it out with my hands and my, my wrist got stuck in the bottle. I tried to force it out. There was no way. So I started, I began to cry. And some few neighbors came to assist me. I had this coin in my hand that I wouldn't let go, and my hand wouldn't come out. I tried all I could to get my hand out. No way. So I kept crying with my hand stuck in this bottle until my mom came back from, from the farm. And when she came back, she knew what to do. And so she asked me to drop the coin back in the bottle. I said, no, it's my coin. I won't let it go. But so long as I hold on to it, my hand will remain stuck until she promised to give me an additional one. But I wouldn't believe it until she put it on my left hand, and then I let go of this one. And like a miracle, my hand just came out. I think this is part of life, and this also has something to do with our daily life's journey, that sometimes we, we grab what we think is best for us, is most important in our life, 
something that we cannot let go, something we feel we cannot do without, not knowing that we have done without this all our life, and now that we have it now, we feel life is not going to be possible without it. And one of those examples is your mobile phones. Not until 10, 20, 30 years, not up, maybe not up to 30 years ago, there was no mobile phones. Only the rich were using mobile phones. But now every, almost everyone has mobile phones, and many people cannot imagine life without their mobile phones now. True of us? It's true. If you have to put away your mobile phones for the next one week, no calls, no text messages, no social media interactions, no uh, nothing at all, watching of news or videos or anything on your mobile phone. Can you imagine what life would be like? We think we cannot do without these things. Apart from mobile phones, there are other things we have now that we don't use, to, we don't have before, and we think without these things, life will come to a standstill. Not until this pandemic happened, I never discovered that there could only be on four reasons why I should go out. Not until this happened, many of you can never imagine yourself not going to Mass on a Sunday, or you have to book a seat to come to Mass. These are realities in life. Life still goes on. We have so many things that we have heaped on ourselves that has become like a burden for us, that has made life very difficult, that has made it almost impossible to be genuinely happy, that has made it very, very difficult for us to relax our brain, our heart, our minds, and be our true self. Some of these could be work-related pro work problems. It could be marriage-related problem, it could be health-related problem, it could be financial problem, economic problem, or many other things. And we feel these things, we cannot do without them. Because when we stop doing without them, our life will stop. We will cease to live. These are the things that Jesus wants us to bring to him today. Come to me and rest. This invitation is an invitation of love. It's an invitation to share the divine life of God. When we talk about the yoke, in those days when they make the yoke, the yoke is usually carried by two people, and then they, they put it together, or two animals, they put it across like a bar, and then they pull to plow the land. One animal cannot carry a yoke. It's very difficult when you carry it by yourself. It's meant for two. And Jesus is inviting us, come, bring your burden to me. We carry, on, we carry needless pains within us that is making life so difficult to the point that sometimes we want to just throw up our hands and say, I am done. I can't do it anymore. I can't take any more. I am fed up. I don't want to live anymore. I just want to sleep and not wake up. I just want to die and forget about everything. Sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Because we carry so much within us. We carry what is beyond our endurance. We have been stretched beyond our limit. We have gone beyond our elastic limit because of the burdens of this life. So this invitation is an invitation to recovery. He wants you to come and recover, to replenish your energy. Jesus wants to share our burdens. He said, learn from me. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. Sometimes we feel the commandments of God or what the, the Bible is demanding of us from, by God is too difficult. It's something that is impossible. We make our own laws and we say, okay, if I do this, this, and that, it will make me happy. But those things that we do to be happy 
lands us in trouble. It makes us even more sad. And that is what, what St. Augustine was doing as a young man. He tried everything. Then one day he, he came to realize, and then when he became, when he gave his life to Christ, when he surrendered completely to God, after he had that experience on the beach, I'm sure many of you are familiar with that story, when St. Augustine was walking along the beach and then he saw a little child. From nowhere, this child came out, dug a, a little hole with her hands, and then with something that looks like a teaspoon, the child will walk about 10, yards to the, 10 meters to the water and then fetch the water to pour it inside the hole she has dug with her hands. And when St. Augustine came and saw this child doing this repeatedly, he said to her, what are you doing here? And the child said, I'm trying to empty this water, this massive water with this spoon in my hand into this hole I dug with my hand. St. Augustine was like, this is crazy. How can you empty the whole water in this ocean with your teaspoon into this little hole you have dug in your, with your hands? And then the child said, do you think what I'm doing is impossible? And when St. Augustine responded yes, she said to him, what you are searching for is by far more impossible than what I'm trying to do. Augustine went home, a different person, and then he wrote, Lord, you have made us for yourself. Our hearts will be restless until they find rest in you. Whatever we think will make us happy and restful in life will bring us more restlessness. The only place we can find rest, like the psalmist said, he lead us to the green pastures where he gives rest to our soul. The only place we can find true rest is in Christ. And that is the invitation, the gentle invitation he's presenting to us today. He said, come, come to me. All you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you new life. I will breathe into your life again the spirit of new life to give you more reason why you should live, to make you happier than you are now, to make life a lot more comfortable and easy for you to live is to follow the pathway of Jesus. So he's inviting us to recovery. He's inviting us to restoration. He wants to restore our spirit because we have done so much. We live in a very fast and moving world and a very busy society. We keep going nonstop until this happens. Only now that many people are forced to slow down or to come to a stop. Otherwise, life has been bang, 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 bang from one stage to the other. We hardly have time to even sit together and talk as a family. We hardly have time to catch our breath, to rest ourselves. Life is not always on the first lane. Jesus wants us to set that time aside, spend time with him and rest. It was Socrates, one of the great ancient philosopher, Greek philosopher, that says, all reflected life is what is on worth living. A life that you don't reflect on, you shouldn't live that life. There should be moments in our life when we have to stop and ask ourselves, what are the most important things in this life? Many of us, we got to a stage where we become so frustrated and then that leads to fight with everyone around us. And this fight has not stopped. What have we resolved? What have we gained from that? Nothing. It has made you so sad and miserable because you want to make life better for yourself. But Jesus is the key. Think of the first time you met Christ. Think of how, what life was like at that time. And now, so he's inviting us into a deeper relationship with him. 
He wants to share our burdens. He wants to share our yoke. He wants to share our pain. That is why he came. And he wants to restore us back to life. So my dear friends in Christ, let us pray at this Mass that we will listen to the invitation of Christ. The invitation to a deeper relationship with him, invitation to love, invitation to rest, invitation to restoration, invitation to hold our hands. He knows we cannot do it alone. We have been trying to do this alone. We have tried many times and failed. And if we keep trying by ourselves, we keep failing again. Because you can't use the same approach all the time and expect a different result. He wants us to try his own approach to life. And then ask ourselves, what are the most important things in this life? What are the basic things? Think of people who are at their final moment. If you ask them, what would they do? What is that one thing they would like to do before they die? I'm sure many of them will not tell you they would like to finish their house. They would like to have this amount of money in their accounts. They would like to finish this assignment in their place of work. Maybe what some of them are missing is just to have a chance to say to someone, I love you. Or to get a chance, that final moment of chance to say to someone, I have forgiven you. Or that final moment to say to their loved ones, thank you for what you have been to me in my life. I know without you, life wouldn't have been meaningful for me. They want to hold somebody's hands and say, thank you to them. Why not say that thank you now? Do you have to wait until that time before you say thank you? Do you have to wait until life is going out of you before you say I love you? Do you have to wait until that final moment before you let go of all these burdens and pains from your heart? Why not do it now? This is what Jesus is telling us to do, to share his burden. It's an invitation because he loves us. He cares for us. Even when nobody cares, he cares. And you know what? Only Jesus knows exactly what you are going through. No one else knows. And no one else can know. Because what you are going through, some of you here, is too deep for you to even put it into words. You can't even say it. It's too deep that you can't express it exactly as it is. This is why he wants you to come. He wants you to trust him. Because he has all it takes to make you happy, to make you relax, to restore your life again, to restore you back to who you truly are. Because the burdens of this life have obviously shifted so many people away from their true self. We have become another person. We have become a shadow of ourselves. We are living in a different shell. This is not who you are. You are by far better than what you are now. If I ask some of you here now, what do you think you are? What kind of person you think you are? Maybe you will tell me I'm not a good person. Possibly that is what some of you may say. I'm a bad person. But do you really believe you are a bad person? You are not. Deep within you, you know you are not a bad person. And you will never be a bad person. That sometimes you say things you shouldn't have said doesn't make you a bad person. It's because you are carrying so much burden that have drifted you from your true self. And it's beginning to transform you into a different person. And then giving you that impression that this is who you are. This is not the person you are. You are a lot better than this. You are by far better than what you think or can imagine. Some of us have never experienced our true self because we've never given God that chance to bring that true self out of us. 
And this is why Jesus is inviting us today. Come to me. I will take your burden away from you. And I will give you the burden that is meant for you to carry. I will make it easy for you. I will make life simple for you. And I will guide you to where you are going. So let us pray that in humility, all of us may accept this invitation of Christ, inviting us to come to him. May God bless you.